all four of us have had a chance to see Morbius. I did a review on the channel. Steve, I saw it with you. Uh, Scotty, you've seen it twice, I believe, because you want to give Jared, like, you're like Jared Leno's hitting up. Jerry Leto's hitting hard times. <laughs> you really got to support him. So you've seen him twice now. But uh, we're going to go uh, – Andrew, Steve, and Scotty will go in that order. Just a quick little, uh, like, five-second, 20-second review of Morbius. Starting with me? Okay. Uh, perfectly, o- <laughs> perfectly okay, fine movie. Feels like early 2000s. Um, I, I, I'm fine with it. It's okay. I'd love to know about the behind the scenes. Uh, where's that book? Yeah, no, not as bad as advertised. Uh, wasn't a whole lot of fun, but it was what it was. And I agree with Andrew. You know, it was perfectly passable as a, it, as a what it was. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that. Yeah, I agree with the current uh, audience scores. If we're going Rotten Tomatoes, because that's the whole like the big controversy nowadays. But the critic score is brutal, in my yeah. opinion. The movie, uh, I feel like, stands out as a good movie introduction for the character at the very least it's a, st- a standalone uh story for him were the critics unnecessarily harsh on it like i i can't i can't watch that movie i can't figure out what was so offensive to them yeah i mean it's not a, i mean it's not a great movie uh scotty you might jump to the screen and punch me if you want but it's not like <laughs> no, I, I, no, I, I, mean, I mean i think i made it pretty clear that i enjoyed that movie but it's not a great movie i think it's and because of the two-year delay i think i made it easy and then the one thing I noticed people are really, really clear with oh, spoilers if you haven't seen Morbius, I guess. I don't know if we're gonna mm-hmm. talk about spoilers. But the one thing people are clinging to, like beyond all reason, is the end credit scenes. Like two like two scenes that are terrible. Like, don't get me wrong, I didn't like the sky. I don't know how you feel because you kind of going into it, you had a different feeling on it than I did. I don't think they they were executed. I thought the idea of them was bad, and I thought the execution was worse. But that didn't ruin the movie for me because they're just mid-credit scenes, and I was like, whatever, I see what you're doing. But it didn't take away from the movie that I watched before it. But a lot of people are really clinging on that. And I think, you know, a lot of critics now are just YouTubers like us who just kind of like, all right, I'm going to write a review. And, you know, you want to be the snobby kid who hates Morbius. Those end credit scenes are the last things you got in your mouth, the taste in your mouth. It's easy to walk away giving this thing a negative review. Yeah, I don't understand why... um changes were made especially with vulture character or who made them apparently the director doesn't didn't even have a part in some of the stuff that went on but the biggest thing to me about one of them was like when he's brought into the jail cell when venom did that uh it was in the venom universe and it was it was clear to us in no way home that he was in that universe like it was confirmed you know he got pulled in and sent back why they didn't deliver that scene harder for this vulture character, like have him have a conversation with a cellmate or show him even in the Marvel side being pulled in. Like if it's a real partnership and you know, they're trying to do sinister six crossover stuff and continue the Marvel Spider-Man relationship. Nothing about this makes sense to me. And my biggest thing is I'm not blaming Sony for it all. I can't, I just personally can't blame Sony for all of this. I want to jump into the chat for a second. Andrew, I'm going to throw you this question first, put you on the spot. But Andy Handy, thanks, Andy Handy. Uh, did Disney influence Sony to delete all the Spidey references from the Morbius theatrical cut? And Scotty just kind of uh, mentioned this a little while ago where the director came out and he said that he didn't even put that Spider-Man shot that's in that trailer in the movie. He said, I don't know, that wasn't me. So do you think there's a chance that Disney had any influence on the decision to remove all the Spider-Man references? Well, if they did, they did a pretty piss poor job of it because that <laughs> that credit scene is literally purple sky from No Way Home. So, like, why are you keeping stuff and not keeping other stuff? Uh, it, it's it's bizarre, man. Those scenes are. I, I'm glad that you told me them ahead of time, James, because I'm I'm glad I I could kind of psych myself up to know that's what we're getting, and it's probably going to be lame. Um, and it, it actually helped because I could just focus on Morbius, the movie itself, the story itself. Uh, so knowing the scenes ahead of time of the post credits was a big plus for me. The one thing it did really well, Steve, we were talking about this after the movie or at some point was it, we were all going into like, what universe is it in? And the movie doesn't care. It just, no. it, it doesn't like, that was the one good thing about it. Well, one of the good things about it was it doesn't focus on 
oh, this multiverse or that universe or what. It was just like, here's a story of Michael Morbius. If you like it or not, that's that's one thing. But I, I was I was happy with that, Steve. <laughs> Definitely simplified things, made it a lot easier for the movie and uh, for Michael Morbius' character to kind of get over with the audience when he's not boggled down with the, the whole multiverse thing. And then they just wash it all away with those end credit scenes. <laughs> the decisions that were made. Were, I, I, I will say, I think uh, I, I mentioned this, I kind of like the Vulture's new mask. But, uh, but it, still, it still was the dumbest thing. I think it made... Like the amount of sense it made was somebody had to green like that. And I can't get over the fact that somebody's making a lot of money and they said, that's a great idea. Um, <laughs> it, it just, it, it blows my mind. And, and was that, okay, we're going to move on. But before we move on though, was that Michael Keaton in the sound booth in like New York bored out of his mind reading those lines? Cause he was phenomenal in homecoming. And then when I watched that, I'm like, he sounds like, like it, maybe it was someone doing an impression of Michael Keaton because he just seemed like video game so actor. Bored. Just the robot. <laughs> they did the Luke Skywalker um, uh, Bo, uh, Mandalorian synthesized voice thing for Michael <laughs> Keaton. There's just like no emotion there. It's um, like if if Judd Apatow were to make like a movie that was to make fun of the whole cinematic universe trend, I feel like that movie would have scenes exactly like those two post credit scenes in them. I'm questioning the relationship myself. I think, <laughs> like, I'm just confused. I don't think that it's going to be as connected with the MCU as we think and that, like, Vulture no. coming back is Vulture staying, you know. Uh, it's just so crazy to me. If I was Sony, honestly, I would step back. Like step way back, do your Spider Verse stuff, do your uh, Madam Web, do your Spider Woman. Like, it's weird, man. And if, like, I don't think Disney could influence them to remove those things unless it was part of the plan going forward. So them being removed by Sony is like Sony being like, "All right, man, that's it. You you did your shot for your hints at Sinister Six, but now it's like, where do we go forward? When does Tom Holland come back up in the MCU?" Are they really going to do the Andrew Garfield stuff? And they're just waiting for an announcement. And that's why they pulled all the Spider-Man hints. Like, it's got to be something big because Sony is in deep water and they're being made to look bad. It just is weird to me. Do you think we'll get clarification on that in the next little while, depending on how Morbius does? The director said, I think we're going to find yeah. that out very soon, didn't I, he? He hinted at that. Yeah, he, he did. And I think I think Sony's so far deep into their universe now that they I mean they could pull the dark universe and just scrap it in the middle of Craven, I suppose. But like they've got mm. Craven shooting right now. They've been casting for Madame Web and I'm sure the two actresses that they got signed on and whoever else, I'm sure they you know, they're probably not their agents weren't dumb. They might have signed like pay to play deals or something like that. So they might be in on yeah, it. Pay to play. But I, for me, I just, I think the biggest mistake in those end credit scenes was Michael Keaton, adding Michael Keaton's vulture to those. If that was any other, if that was, because the thing, I was thinking about this, Iron Man works so well with the same post credit scene. Essentially, it's the same post credit scene in Iron Man, but still with um, Nick Fury and, and Tony Stark, right? It's the same, it's the same idea is what I'm saying. Like, he's like, I got to start a team, we're starting a team, and you know, like, the difference was we followed Tony Stark and then there was a mysterious figure who had no connection to anything showed up at the end and brought them together. Now, comic book fans knew who it was and blah, blah, blah. But this one, it was we all know who the Vulture is. And they first, they changed the Vulture's character completely. They brought him into a universe that made absolutely no sense how they did so. So there was a lot of issues with that. I think it could like they could have just made it Craven or someone be like, hey, Putting together this team, and then the, the content, the re, and then we, we're not going to be asking why would he want to put together a team. I also think adding Spider-Man to that line of dialogue was one of the most forced things ever, because Spider-Man, for all we know, in Morbius doesn't exist in Morbius's universe. He's like, for all we've seen in Morbius and Venom, aside from the post-credit scene in Venom, Let There Be Carnage, but there's no Spider-Man. There's a Daily Bugle. But there's no Spider-Man. We haven't seen Spider-Man. No one's argued about him. Well, the seeds are there. The seeds are there, right? But would Morbius know who Spider-Man is? I don't think so. That's what that's what I mean. Well, that's it's why like he he's... says he's intrigued. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's no confirmation that Venom knows who he is either. 
But yeah, Venom, yeah, it's weird, man. Um so we've been after this Sinister Six for since forever. Like they've done this with Spider-Man Raimi Spider-Man 3, Amazing Spider-Man 2, where they're like, we're gonna put in everyone because they feel mm. like they've always needed to do this. And it's like, just let it happen. Like right now, I think with the box office for Morbius and the two Venom films, people are we're good. Like, we're gonna go see your movies, just bring us to the Sinister Six. Don't bring them to us. Like, lead lead the horse to water. We're gonna go. We're like we're there. We you like all four of us saw Morbius this weekend. We saw like so we all went to go see it. There were, it was sixteen percent with Steve and I went. There was five of us in the theater, but people went to go see it. It made more than Birds of Prey's opening weekend. Like Sony, we're good. You got us. Don't force the Sinister Six. Just make it happen, dude. I think it is uh, Andrew Garfield's universe. And yeah, it probably is. You you know what's crazy about that? is when the vulture who's trying to take revenge on the spider-man finds out that in the no way home events andrew garfield saved his daughter's life huh. who's his daughter mj Liz? no mj from no way from so zendaya is not adrian tomb's daughter no no, no. that was his daughter was, was a different daughter. it was liz yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I, it's been a while since I saw the Spider-Man movie. Peter got all kind of action. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Bounced around in that first movie. Got you, got you. It's a... But yeah, like, it's it's weird. It's all weird. I don't like it. It is. Let's move. Okay, let's. It, it feels like anyone? sabotage. I, I have a lot <laughs> well, of look. thoughts on, yeah, on Twitter. Can... I went in on Twitter. It was yeah. bad. Oh, I'm not deleting it. them. I'm not deleting them. <laughs> They look, there's a different there's a different cut of this movie out there that we would that For if they sure. released this two years ago, we would have seen a different movie two years ago. Yeah, and because, five months ago we would have seen yeah, five that, months. the trailer that dropped five months Dude, ago was yeah. before it was delayed and then chopped to pieces. Yeah. Why does this I always also, happen to in why does this always happen to Jared Leto also? Because he's a he's a method actor. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit, payback, payback for his 45 minute long bathroom breaks. 